Hey everybody, welcome back. We're gonna continue our unit on rational expressions. And uh, in the previous unit, we had learned about uh, how rational expressions can be functions. And we talked about rational functions and domain restrictions. And now we're gonna dive really into working with rational expressions. Uh, so we're gonna operate on them. We're gonna do all sorts of crazy stuff on them. But first, what we need to do is learn how to simplify them. Now you've done this before. Okay, so this is like old school, especially if you look at numbers one and number two. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna walk you through number one and number two, and then help us with, uh, it'll help us with a little bit of number three, which should also look familiar, laws of exponents. And then we can start getting into more complicated stuff uh, that looks like, that looks like these. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna build on some prior knowledge, I hope, and, uh, and then hopefully we'll be able to see a couple of wrinkles, a couple of tricks, and, uh, and learn how to work really well with simplifying rational expressions. So let's get to some notes uh, and, and, and how we're going to deal with it. I, I would like to give just one basic note for simplifying rational expressions. And that basic note is make sure that we are paying attention to, uh, to operations. That is going to be a key, key element. So as we're working with rational expressions, we have to always pay attention to operations. Be able to read the math that you're looking at. Okay, so we have to pay attention to operations when it comes to reading the math you're looking at. And we're going to have to know the difference between addition and multiplication. Okay, so the most important thing that we can do in, in rational expressions is paying attention to operations, reading the math correctly, and knowing the difference between addition and multiplication. So to highlight that, we're going to jump right into that first example, um, which is simplifying this rational expression. And you may have, uh, you may have seen this before in other, you know, growing up through math courses and stuff which is basically, you know, simplify this fraction or express this fraction in lowest terms or reduce this, which I hate doing, but, but we have seen this before. So we're going uh, to pay attention to the difference between addition and multiplication. So as you know, for simplifying this rational expression, we have to look to see if the uh, numerator and denominator are both divisible by, uh, by a certain number. Are they both divisible by the same number? Okay, so uh, that's what we have to look at. And, and we know that in this example, yeah, they're, the numerator and denominator are both divisible by 2. Okay, so the way we had done this in the past probably is we have seen, uh, you know, our work for this particular example look like this. You know, so we're going to divide 16 by 2, then we're going to divide 6 by 2. Uh, so we've seen that in the past. Right? But I want to I wanna do this in a different way. I want to see how, uh, how this would look in a different way. So when we look at 16 uh, divided by 6, what I'd like for us to do is see if we can conceive 16 as the product of 8 and 2, and if we can see 6 as the product of 3 and 2. Okay, so I want us to see um, this. And then what would happen, right? So how, ca how can we work with this? So if 16 is actually 8 times 2 and 6 is actually 3 times 2, what is happening? Well, now we have, remember from the previous uh, unit a while ago, the big 1. Okay, so now we have our big 1, and that can cancel, right? So we can cancel out our big 1, leaving us with 8 over 3 as the, uh, as the resulting simplified expression. So we are paying attention to operations, right? So we have division going on, and we have multiplication going on. So our canceling here, the canceling the big one is the key element. This can only happen in multiplication. We can only cancel the big one in multiplication, okay? So uh, that's a huge note. We can only cancel in multiplication. And we may ask, why? Why can we only cancel in multiplication? Well, let's look at this. 
Let's say I had this other example. How is it that we can only cancel in multiplication? If you're so focused on the big one, notice the note. We're seeing the difference between addition and multiplication. If you notice in this example, we have 8 plus 2 over 3 plus 2. Remember over here we had 8 times 2 and 3 times 2. We could cancel the big one because we can only cancel in multiplication. Can we cancel the 2's here, right? Clearly we cannot, okay? So we cannot cancel the 2's here, all right? Uh, oh, hopefully, hopefully you see why by now. So we cannot cancel the 2's here. Why not? Well, because 8 plus 2 in the numerator is 10, and 3 plus 2 in the denominator is 5, and 10 divided by 5, uh, 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2. Okay, so we cannot cancel the 2's. And you're thinking, well, again, why not? Well, if we had 8 plus 2 over 3 plus 2, and we canceled the 2's, we'd be left with 8 over 3. And clearly, 8 over 3 is not 2, so... We can't do that, right? So we, we can't cancel the twos because we're dealing in addition. We can only cancel in multiplication. That is so critical to, uh, to understanding rational expressions, okay? So look, look a, a similar example here, right? Can we cancel the sevens and can we cancel the fours? No, we can't cancel the sevens and the fours because that would leave us with one plus one or two. But what is this big expression? This big expression happens to be 11 over 11, which equals one. So if we couldn't cancel the sevens and we couldn't cancel the fours, leaving us with two, is there another way of seeing this example? As a matter of fact, yes, there is. What if we grouped the numerator, we grouped the denominator, could we cancel then, right? Could we cancel 7 plus 4 over 7 plus 4? And the answer is yes, yes we can, because now with the grouping symbols, we're looking at one thing, okay? We're going to see that again in example uh, 4, okay? But with the grouping symbols, we're looking at one thing. So in this case, we can cancel this way, mm -hmm. and that equals 1. But what we cannot do is cancel this way. Okay, so look at what we can't do. We cannot cancel this way. Because that would leave us with 2, right? Because this would be 1. This would be 1. And 1 plus 1 equals 2. So we can't do it that way. We cannot cancel straight down. We can only cancel things in multiplication. So canceling only occurs in multiplication. So make sure that we are paying attention to operations. Make sure that we know the difference between addition and multiplication. Okay. So now on to example two. We're going to simplify this expression. And so we're going to see uh, some old stuff coming back. All right. So how do, we, how do we simplify this expression? Well, I don't know what could the, the most simplest way to look at those numbers is. So what we can do, we can cancel in steps is another thing that we can do. So it's totally possible for us to cancel in steps. And we can look for things briefly at a time. Both these numbers end in even numbers. So both are divisible by 2. So we could divide the numerator and denominator by 2. Okay, but I told you, let's, not, let's try to look at it in a different way. 476 happens to be 238 times 2. And 64 happens to be 32 times 2. Okay, so that's just what happens to be. And then we can cancel the 2s. That would leave us with 238 over 32. And then we look and think, well, ha have we canceled it completely? Is this completely simplified? Uh, no, because 2 is an even number. 8 is an even number. Both of these numbers are divisible by 2. So we can also uh, simplify some more. So 238 happens to be 119 times 2. And 32 happens to be 16 times 2. And what can we do? We can cancel the twos because cancellation can apply only in multiplication. Okay, so canceling applies only in multiplication. And our simplest version is 119 over 16. 
these are no, no longer divisible. 119 uh, is prime, right? So uh, in 16, even number, odd number, there's no divisible uh, number, so we are, we are simplified, okay? So we can also cancel in steps. So there's a few things that we can, uh, we can see there we can cancel in steps. All right. So again, I've used, um, I've used number one and number two uh, and some of our background knowledge to see how we can apply things to more complicated rational expressions. So now we're going to look at number three. I've given you uh, uh, example A and example B. And while I do that, well, I want you to remember a couple things. Number one, laws of exponents. And number two, clearly see the difference between a numerator and a denominator. Now, if we remember our laws of exponents, right? If you remember law, right? If we had a to the n over a to the m, that is equal to the a to the n minus m, right? If you remember that law, we can apply that law if we so choose. In example a, we would end up with x to the negative 2 power. In example b, we would end up with x to the positive 2 power. Okay? And if we look at a, well, we can't have a negative exponent, so here we'd have to use a different law, right? If we remember the laws of negative exponents, we would have to use um, that negative exponent law for x to the negative 2. We would end up with 1 over x squared. And so we have to see the difference uh, between numerators and, uh, and denominators here. Okay, so that's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is, again, canceling in steps. Okay, so if we look at, we look at a, we have x to the fifth power, it's x times x times x times x times x, x to the seventh power, x times 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 x. And then what we can do is cancel in steps. Okay, so what we can do is cancel in steps. So we can cancel the one here, because canceling occurs only in multiplication. And what would happen, all of our x's in the numerator would cancel, leaving us still with a numerator. The numerator still has to be there. If you remember, uh, the denominator of 1 only works in, uh, in integers, but a numerator of 1 has to be accounted for. So we have to have our numerator of 1 here. So we'd be left with 1 in the numerator. All right, so we have 1 over x squared or 1 over x squared, like we had originally seen. So we can see it in two different ways. And similarly, with, uh, with example b, if we look at x to the seventh power, and we look at x to the fifth power, we can cancel in steps. Okay, so we can cancel in steps, and you know, cancel, 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 cancel. Well, we would be left with a one in the denominator. Okay, so then we'd have x squared over one. Well, anyone with a calculator can tell you that one in the numerator is very different than 1 in the denominator. Okay, so 1 in the denominator is saying anything divided by 1. Well, we're dividing by 1, so we're just left with x squared. If 1 was in the numerator, 1 divided by something, that's going to be a tiny, tiny number. Okay, so uh, 1 in the numerator versus 1 in the denominator are very different things. Okay, so pay attention to where your 1 is because it makes an impact. All right, so the, that is also prior knowledge. Okay, so now we see with, uh, uh, from the setup, from the original problems, we have examples 1, 2, and 3 setting us up for some really fun stuff. Okay, well, I think it's fun. So now let's look at number, uh, number 4. And I've given you uh, a couple things that can help you look at this. Now, if you recall... That 7 plus 4 example, right? Remember 7 plus 4 over 7 plus 4. If we group it, if we group our 7 plus 4s, we can, we can cancel the whole thing. Because if we're adding a group and the same group is being added uh, in a denominator, we're, we're actually looking at multiplication. We're looking at an entire group and we can cancel the whole thing out. So if we look at example A, hopefully you see a similar thing can be applied here. So if we have x plus 2 times x plus 3 in the numerator, then 4 times x plus 2 
in the denominator, you know, how many things are being multiplied in the numerator? Okay, so if we look at in the numerator, we're looking at two things being multiplied in the numerator and two things being multiplied in the denominator. And remember our other note, we can only cancel in multiplication. We can't cancel in addition. So what we cannot do is cancel the x's here. We can't cancel the x's here. We can't do that. We can only cancel things that are being multiplied. So are there any similar things in the numerator and denominator that are being multiplied? Absolutely. We have an x plus 2 here and an x plus 2 there. And remember, we also can't cancel this way. We can't cancel addition. We can only cancel multiplication. So what can we do? This x plus 2 and this x plus 2 create a giant 1. So we can cancel the big 1. Okay, So we can only cancel in multiplication, and we can cancel the big 1, resulting in left in the numerator is x plus 3, left in the denominator is 4. And that is as much as we can do. We cannot cancel anything else because canceling doesn't work in addition. Canceling only works in multiplication. All right, so that's how canceling can work, building off of that prior knowledge. Uh, hopefully you see that that can, uh, that can apply. So now we look at 4b. All right, so we look at 4b. This one looks a little bit more complicated. So here's a couple of things that we cannot do. Okay, so what we can't do is say, well, 6 and 4 are both divisible by 2. We can divide those, or the x and x. We, remember, we can't, we can't cancel in, uh, in addition. So we can only cancel in multiplication. So here's that note again. Only cancel in multiplication. So the question then is, if these things are not being multiplied, is there a way that we can show them as multiplication? Can we show them as multiplication? And the answer is yes, we can. How do you show things in multiplication? You factor them. So how do you show things in multiplication? You factor them. So we can factor the numerator and we can factor the denominator. Okay, so. If we don't see things in multiplication, we can look to factor things. Okay, so always look to factor things. So let's take a look at the numerator in, in problem B. We have x squared plus 5x plus 6. So you factor that in any method possible. And if you don't remember factoring trinomials, you have to pause here, go back to the previous unit on polynomial equations, and look for factoring. But we can definitely use mental math to factor this numerator. Okay, so it's two numbers that multiply to 6 but add to 5. Positive 2 and positive 3. And then we look in the denominator. GCF first, and the GCF happens to be 4. And if we factor out the GCF, we'll be left with x plus 2. Okay, so we look to factor first. And if we look to factor first, now we're dealing in multiplication. And since we're dealing in multiplication, we can start looking to cancel things. And so here we can cancel our x plus 2's. And you may be thinking, wait a minute, Mr. Katz, that looks awfully familiar. And it should because I did that on purpose. Okay, so actually, number 4, a and b are the same thing. However, it does present us a note. Uh, when we look at things that are not working in multiplication, can we factor them and then see that we can cancel in multiplication? So the note here is going to be factor first. Factor first. Isn't that a neat note? So we can look to cancel factor first. All right. So now, now we can look at uh, number five. So we look at number five, and this is interesting because we have, again, A and B. Now, and hopefully you know Mr. Cassis, those aren't the same. No, definitely not. So if we look at A, 2 plus x and x plus 2. All right, so we have 2 plus x in the numerator, x plus 2 in the denominator. And remember, we cannot, we cannot cancel in addition. We can only cancel in multiplication. So the question that becomes is, can we rewrite this as anything? And if you look, we have the 2 and the x. Something looks like we can do a thing. Uh, can we rewrite this? And, and yes, we can. Thank goodness for the commutative property. Because we can rewrite 2 plus x as x 
plus 2. And if we re rewrite that as x plus 2, then we have x plus 2 in the numerator and x plus 2 in the denominator. Okay, so now we're looking at actually the same thing. But remember, we cannot cancel this way. We don't cancel that way, okay? Because that would end up with 2. What we can do is see the numerator as a whole and see the denominator as a whole, okay? So we're going to use grouping symbols to see the whole. And that is a pretty big note. We use grouping symbols to see the whole. And this is the whole with a W. Because uh, eventually we're, we'll learn holes with it, just an H. Anyway, so we're going to use grouping symbols to see the whole, the whole thing. And once we see the whole thing, yeah, we can totally cancel that whole thing. Right? X plus 2 is divided by X plus 2, and that will leave us with 1. Okay, so in number 5, example A, we're dealing with 1. Well, what about number 5, uh, example B? We have 2 minus X and X minus 2. We have to remember that subtraction is not commutative, okay? Subtraction is not commutative. So <laughs> x plus 2 is not the same thing as, or x minus 2 is not the same thing as 2 minus x. But what we have to do is recognize, 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 okay? So let's see if we can recognize something. Now, since subtraction is not commutative, can we still rewrite the numerator, though? Yes, because addition is commutative, right? So we can rewrite the numerator as actually 2 minus x is the same thing as negative x plus 2. That is actually our numerator. And our denominator is still x minus 2. So we have to recognize something. Did you know? that these could look awfully similar if we did a thing. Could we factor out a negative 1? What would happen? And this is all recognition, all recognition. Can we factor out a negative 1 from the numerator? What would happen if we factored out a negative 1 from the numerator? And if we factored out a negative 1 from the numerator, we would be left with negative, one, negative x divided by negative 1 is positive x. 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2. We would be left with x minus 2. <gasps> Do you see what just happened? Okay, so we factored out a negative 1 for the numerator. But you would ask, Mr. Katz, how would I know to do this? The only way you could know to do this is by recognizing. And the only way to develop skills in recognition is to practice. Make sure you're working on those practice problems. Okay, so we have to be able to recognize what's happening. So in example B, remember the setup, we had 2 minus x over x minus 2. We could factor out a negative 1, right? And then we could have something that would end up canceling. And again, we cannot cancel this way. We can't do that. But we can recognize the denominator as a whole. We could use grouping symbols to see the whole and then cancel out the whole. Bloop, bloop. And that would leave us with negative 1. All right, so hopefully you thought that was kind of cool. Uh, I, I think so anyway. OK, so we are now seeing some more skills. And to develop that recognition, we should probably uh, do our practice problems. OK, on to the next one. So we have our next expression, x cubed plus 64 right, in the numerator, in the denominator, 4 plus x. Now remember what we cannot do. We cannot, we cannot cancel this way. We cannot cancel that way because these are being added. Can we express this as multiplication? And uh, hopefully you're recognizing something. And if you don't recognize something now, you need to hit pause, go back to the previous unit on factoring cubes. Factoring cubes. Hopefully you can recognize the numerator as a sum of cubes. Okay, and remember how to factor a sum of cubes. We have our setup, right? And then our little abbreviation for the signs. The signs stay the same, the opposite, and always positive. Okay, so we have to remember how to factor cubes. Okay, sums of cubes, difference of cubes, because factoring is a huge deal. 
All right, so when we look at, uh, when we look at number six in the numerator, we have to apply our uh, factoring of cubes. It's all about recognition. So in the numerator, what we're doing is actually looking at x plus four, because by the way, four cubed to 64, is x plus four times x squared minus four x plus 16, and that is in the numerator. In the denominator, we have four plus x. All right, so uh, you know, what can we do now? Is there anything that we can cancel? Well, if you look in the numerator, are we multiplying anything? Yeah, we're multiplying two numbers. In the denominator, we have four plus x, but can we use anything? Can you recognize something we can do? Absolutely. This, is, this can be rewritten as uh, x plus four. So if we're looking in the numerator, we have x plus four, and then x squared minus four, x plus 16. And then in the denominator, I can use the commutative property to rewrite the denominator. And then I can use grouping symbols to see the whole. And then from my seeing the whole, I can cancel out my one. Okay, so uh, you can see that we're using the commutative property. We're factoring cubes, using the commutative property, canceling the whole. And leaving us with x squared minus 4x plus 16. Okay, and that is our simplified expression. So when we look at number six, that original expression, Okay, so that's actually simplified to uh, a handy little trinomial. All right, so we're factoring first. We're using all of these concepts that we actually never knew we knew, and, uh, and we're seeing some cool stuff. All right, so let's take a look then at, uh, at our last example, number seven. So we have 5a squared plus 10 in the numerator, a cubed minus 3a squared plus 2a minus 6 in the denominator. And remember what we can't do. Okay, so what we can't do is cancel in addition. But what we can do is see if we can cancel in multiplication. So how does that work? Let's look to factor. So in the numerator, uh, for number seven, the numerator see a GCF of five, I do anyway, hope you do as well, we'd be left with a squared plus two. In the denominator, hmm. Can we factor this? Well, we can't combine like terms. There are four terms. Let's try factoring by grouping. Maybe we can factor by grouping. Okay, so we can look to do that. In the first group, a squared is the GCF. We'll be left with a minus three. In the second group, two is the GCF, but there's a plus sign. So we're gonna factor out a plus two. And again, if this is difficult, we gotta go back to the previous unit on factoring. And we'll be left with a minus three. And so hopefully you see we have a common binomial of a minus three. And then we have a squared plus two. So when we factor our numerator, we have the resulting expression. When we factor our denominator, we have the resulting expression. And do you see anything that we can cancel? And I hope you do. Okay, so we can only cancel whole things, right? We can only cancel in multiplication. So our factors here and here can be canceled. There's our big one. So what are we left with? Five over a minus three, right? So this this whole crazy uh, this whole crazy polynomial, right? Look at that expression, that crazy rational expression. The only thing that's left is five over a minus three. So the whole thing gets simplified to there. And that is simplification. So we're going to have to practice. You guys got to do work on your practice, and then uh, and you'll be good to go. Okay, and we'll continue doing some more crazy stuff later. Thank you so much.